Okay, before we get started today, I just wanted to take a moment to invite anyone. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I invite you to subscribe. If you enjoy the content, please hit that like button. And as you find out, uh, this job, it went from a simple job to uh, a not so simple job. And you'll find out what went wrong later in the video here. Okay, uh, we're back working on this 2002 Ram 1500. Today we're going to be replacing this rack and pinion here. This is a two-wheel drive. Uh, we're also going to be taking care of the outer tie rods and, of course, inner tie rods that come with the rack. So that's going to fix a lot of the slack that we have in the steering there. Here's a view at this uh, rack and pinion. This is a remanufactured one here. And it uh, looks to be uh, pretty good. Uh, I ordered this online. Uh, the only complaint I have is these lines here were bent and not usable. I'm going to have to swap the lines from my existing rack. So I'm not real happy with that, but it's not like I can just return it and you know, go down to the parts store. So I'm going to swap those over and hopefully everything else is, is good with it. Just to give you a close-up look at what I'm talking about, these completely not usable. Now it's not real difficult. I've swapped these over before. So, um, see the other thing, uh, the reman didn't come with any new seals for these lines. So, uh, I've, it's not a big deal. I have reused, uh, the seals before with other rack and pinions I've put used ones on didn't have any issue now having said that if I do have a problem uh, probably will just replace that line entirely now you probably could go to the the dealer I'm not gonna be able to get there today um, but you probably could go there and get some seals for these lines uh, plan on spending probably ten fifteen dollars for each seal Another thing, um, these bushings doesn't come with the bushing, so you have to reuse your other bushing. So you want to get you some, so this is what I got, some aftermarket polyurethane. Let me show you what these look like. So I thought about these ahead of time because I knew that it wasn't coming with these. And this is, you know, they feel pretty pretty durable. So I got these. I uh, didn't really know about the seals. I'm not really worried about those for the lines. Like I said I would probably have gotten the whole entire line. I can get those online. Pretty good deal. So you only got the, you know, the pressure and the return line. Um, here's the the tie rod outer tie rod I'm going to be going with uh, like how these got the hex like the OEM these weren't too bad expensive um, easily uh, AC Delco are really good so this is the ones I went with and these are the same for both sides So the other thing you're going to need is uh, to get you some ATF plus four to put back in here. Uh, so that's what they call for. Or something equivalent. Okay, this uh, rack and pinion has close to 215,000 miles on it. It's been leaking for some time. And you have to add fluid occasionally. So um, we're going to clean this up a little bit before we get started and yeah, probably take it to the car wash it just uh, it's really kind of caked on with dirt and everything so I just wanted to give you a visual of this and uh, so it's been leaking for a long time okay as you can see that looks a whole lot better after we clean that off
Okay, so first thing, we've got the rear wheel chopped. Okay, um, I've got a couple of jack stands. I'm going to use to support it up here. At the moment, I've just got it up on ramps. And I've got a couple of jacks on each side. I'll show you where I got those positioned. Okay, so we're just back here on the frame on each side. Okay, we've got a drain pan under here. Before I even mess with the, taking the wheels off, uh, we want to go ahead and we're going to get this draining. So we're going to work on taking these lines loose. Okay, so you can look up here and see. So we got our, um, one of them is going to be our high pressure. Should be this bottom one, the smaller diameter fitting. And then the large one up top is going to be the return. So uh, I will say as far as rack and pinions go, this is one of the easier ones that you can remove because everything's just right up here in the front, easy to get to. Okay, so we're going to get our 18 millimeter on here. And the easiest thing to do is take a rubber mallet hit this so we're just going to take and hit this here and you see how easily that comes loose okay so I so said this is our pressure line So I didn't get everything perfectly clean, but it's a lot better than it was. So it's not going to be near as nasty. We'll probably get it, get it by hand here. So they say that it holds about three quarts. So that's what you're going to need put back so I've got my drain pan down here ready to go okay it's still hanging up on me here it's loose but not quite loose enough Okay, so here is the seal in question. It's like a little O-ring. So if you could figure out, get you another oil O-ring or whatever, same size as that, that's what you need. Now, unless it's damaged, visibly damaged, usually they're fine. And a lot of times um, the OEM always fit better. Seems like the only time I have problems is when I get an aftermarket and it's too big, too little, always something. Okay, now this one up here, we're going to get on. Um, now, apparently, this is supposed to be a 20 millimeter. I don't have a 20 millimeter. What I do have is a 13 16. It's a little bit bigger. But that's all right. So we're going to do the same thing that we did. Let's get a different hold on this. Okay, so I'm going to have to go back where I was. All right, so there we got it loose. So 
so they're pretty pretty snug but that hammer makes easy work out of it now you could just put some strength to it and pop it loose as well but the hammer just makes it a little easier so this is our return line that's coming directly from the cooler the power steering cooler up here in the front I'll show you where that's each of these are going in just a second now I have replaced the the uh, the pressure line on one of these but I haven't had any issues out of the return all right so as you can see get where I can show you this as you can see it's uh, got the same sort of o-ring that goes in there so we'll clean these ends off after they get through dripping okay and what we're going to do is just let both of those drain while we go out here and we work on some other things we'll just let them be draining doing their thing and uh, hopefully they'll quit dripping here shortly okay so I wanted to show you uh, while I was at it where this uh, return line is going it runs back over here you can see there's a plastic clip going to that shroud and you can see how it's coming from this other part on the uh, cooler up here coolers running right through there so it's the one that's on this side and then this one is actually being fed from the uh, fill reservoir up there and you can see this little u-shaped one right here that is the the pressure line and that uh, I remember that one and you can see mine's got the switch that is uh, built right into the line. I guess it depends on what year that you have, but I remember doing one of those. And I don't remember it being real fun for whatever reason, but um, had to replace one of those before. But anyways, that one runs down and it is our smaller one here. So um, I said if I was going to uh, worry about these seals if I, let's just say that I do have a leak which I won't but if I did I would just replace it, this line right here because I know that this one is uh, bad to give you problems and the same way with this one these are not real expensive I would just replace this return line if this leaks it'll come with a new seal and everything and you could also get just the end if you didn't want to do that but I would want the whole hose and just uh, be done with it so anyways uh, we're just going to let this drip and while it's doing that we're going to get out here and work on these uh, getting these wheels off all right i've got my seven eighths we're going to go ahead and break these lugs loose on both sides and then we'll get the vehicle actually lifted up and supported so we're just going to do the same thing both sides break the lugs loose and we'll lift it up now if you don't have the you know the jacks and everything uh, you can still do it you're just going to have less room and everything okay we've got the vehicle raised up and we got the jack stands supporting it we'll go ahead and get this wheel off Now 
And to help this drain, we're going to go ahead and come up here and take this cap off. So we're going to leave the jacks in place. We've got our jack stands. And uh, if you don't have any of these with these locking pins, I highly recommend these. Okay, so we come in here, we make sure that we got our wheel perfectly straight. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, we got a 21 millimeter here. We're going to get on this control, or this uh, tie rod here. Now, if you're having to reuse your tie rods, your outer tie rod, for whatever reason, and you don't want to mess it up, then you want to leave the nut on there. You may even have some that have the pin you have to pull out if they've been replaced, but you leave the nut on there just to prevent you from damaging the threads. And a lot of times you'll run it flush with the end, but with these, they got these hex ends, so there's no worry of damage. The only worry would be if you slipped off and you hit the thread, so you'd want to leave the nut Okay, so we got our eight pound sledge ready to go. Now you want to be cautious and don't be hitting things that you don't need to be hitting. And uh, some of these um, can really be hard to remove. So uh, I said, um, you know, I see people hitting these. Uh, I guess you could do that to get it loose. Uh, pickle fork, whatever you want to use. Pickle forks, I don't like at all. This is aluminum. You know, I don't want to really damage this but I don't care about this and more especially with this hex end so that's how I remove them but they can be really tough And you can tell if you um, take your tie rod and see if you can push it. And this one doesn't feel bad, surprisingly. The um, outer tie rod, on the other hand, is horrible. You can see the rip there, but the inner one actually feels okay. Now, if you have this thing spinning on you, you just uh, use a, you know, a wrench and then hold this end down here with a wrench as well. Okay, so we've got our lines loose and we've got the tie rods loose from the knuckle. So now uh, we're going to go back behind this and get on the bolts that are mounting it up here okay so here's what we're going to use here we got a 24 millimeter you're going to need a breaker bar and a cheater pipe and uh, on this other side we're going to be i don't have a 22 wrench but i got this 15 16 so it'll work just fine and i've got my shop shot filled rubber mallet um, so we're going to be using both these to get these loose here okay so we're going to uh, start over here from the driver's side and we'll take our 24 breaker bar and we're going to get a hold of this get our cheater pipe on it okay so we can push in this direction and this is going to be tight these are going to be anywhere from 185 to 235 foot pounds so they're going to be really really tight so you really gonna need the breaker bar 
and possibly the cheater bar. But we got it moving, so it's no problem from here. Okay, so this is loose enough. We'll go ahead and get get on that other side. Okay, so over on this side, you'll note we got a wool pan here. Can't get in here with the breaker bar. Can't fit in here with the ratchet. But our 1516s, we can get in here. So we're gonna just position it there. So you can see you just don't have the clearance here. So unless you want to lift your engine up um, or get a special crow foot that may or may not round your bolt off. All right, so again, we're going to be using the shot filled rubber mallet. Now, I have removed some of the you know, most stuck head bolts and some big transmission nuts and bolts. This, so don't underestimate the power that you can get. Now, it's going to take you a bit to get this thing turning enough. Some really good, good wax, but it will move. So I'm going to get one of them out here. I think we're just going to get this one over on this side. And we'll get on the other one that I can actually get a ratchet on. And we'll get around the front kind of get a hand on it maybe or something. Yeah, once you get it, it broke loose initially, these come out pretty easy. All right, so got that loose. It's just kind of sitting there. We might actually be able to get it to hold it in place when we get this other one while we're back here. And if it does fall, I don't really care. It's not any good anyways. But I'm gonna try to reach around here and just get a hand on it. But I don't think that it's going to fall. Okay, so those are loose, still setting there. Okay, so we've got to get the pinch bolt for the steering column here. Um, we're going to be using a 13 millimeter, and uh, let's move this line over a minute so we can see something. There we go. So we're just going to be taking that bolt out so we can drop this down. And I've just got a, it's a 13, an extension. And we're just going to get on that right there. Said your, your steering is straight, so just don't be moving it. Keep it where it's at and just drop it down. This shouldn't be terribly tight, but who knows. Just feels like it's got 
got some Loctite to it. So we got to get this bolt completely out. Okay, it's getting a lot easier now. Okay, so that's all there is to that. And just take and pull that little bolt out. The 13 millimeter. Looks like they had some medium Loctite on there. Um, this should be you should be able to push this up but it, it may try to stick on you just don't get too rough with it let me get my rubber mallet okay I'm just uh, using my extension and tapping my uh, rubber mallet on the end of it down here just kind of hooking it right there And you see it will push up out of the way, no problem. It's not, uh, it's got slack, so you can just push it up. Right, so that's all there is to that. And uh, I said, you can see the indention right here where your bolt goes through, it goes through this. And then it locks into that indention there. So if it does get loose, it can't fall off of there. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and get the rack off. Okay, with the bolts loose on the rack, we should be able just to pull it back here. There's virtually nothing in the way. Right, so there we have it setting down there. Just kind of got the ports setting up, you know, so I'm not damaging these lines and also, I'm sure that fluid would continue to pour out of it there. Okay, so we need to get these lines transferred over first, and we also got the bushings there. Okay, so I've been uh, removing these old bushings, and it's pretty uh, easy. Um, just sets in there. Basically, I started with this side. It has the big inch and seven-eighths hex. I took a big pair of... Uh, channel locks there and just kind of wiggled it took it out and this kind of fell out in there and then I pulled that out with pliers so no big deal um, <clears throat> and then this is on the back side and of course it has that bushing and I just took a socket that was that size and just knocked that out from the back so those are no big deal to, to remove they're just held in there with those rubber bushings but anyways we're getting ready to put our new bushings in and the way I'm gonna do it is pushing these in here first and so we're gonna do it's gonna be easier to push these in by themselves Get them down good and flat. Okay, so you have to be careful with your lines. We're going to flip it over. And we are going to just do the same thing. We're going to push these in from the back. Get them all the way down flat. right see how easy that is so we're just gonna we'll take a little white lithium and put on here and then that's gonna just help us wiggle it down into place I think I'm gonna be able to get it pretty much by hand here looks like I've got a little bit to go I have to get my channel locks here right let's see how far we got it there let's see if we can just maybe twist it on down mm, it's pretty tight okay we'll be careful and hit it with a rubber mallet then 
just want to be careful and not damage anything. Alright, so that's down. If it wasn't, the bolt's going to pull it in there anyway. So you see the lines and the everything come into this side. And this is the front where our threaded portion goes. Okay, this one appears to feel a little bit tighter. So that's got that one. We'll flip it over. So the important thing until we get this in is watch our lines. Don't be getting rough and tearing up anything. Or just watch what you're doing. You know, these are getting snugger. So I got it started. Like I said, I'm just watching what I'm doing. Don't want to damage anything. get this other side over here alright right, so we've got those on there so moving on Okay, now what we're going to do is take a reference of where the tie, outer tie rod is at. Now, what are the chances that everything's going to be exactly the same as it was before? Well, it's pretty slim. But we took a measurement from this jam nut to here. And I got 11 sixteenths. Now, while I'm here, you notice this jam nut is quite a bit thicker than the aftermarket. We're going to be taking that off and using that. Um, so I've got 11 sixteenths here. Now from here I got to the end of the threads on this inner tie rod I got 9 sixteenths on this side. So that's going to be my reference. It's going to be my starting point. So we're going to uh, remove this bigger jam nut uh, one more thing I want to show you. Okay, so the other thing I did to double check things and we get it together, I went from the center line of this outer tie rod. You just visualize the center line on that and make a mark to the center line down here. Now I got just a sixteenth shy of 62 inches. So I wrote that down as well. So that's, I'm going to get them where they are on here and if it's way different then I'm going to adjust it a little bit but that's the overall 62 inch you can see my mark right here that's my center line so that's what I measured from center line to center line on the other other end now we're going to go ahead and remove this okay so to remove this um, got a 7 8 Got some a flat spot right here, and I'm holding that, and then I'm taking 15 sixteenths on this one, and basically I'm holding that and using my rubber mallet to hit this. So you're gonna need to hold this one and then hit it. So that gets the jam nut loose. So we got that loose. 
Now this is the OEM. It doesn't have a hex. So I'm just using these channel locks here. And what I have to do is lock it around here like this. Then I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to stand on this. It's really going to give us a lot of pressure to hold it. Okay, and then the same thing I'm going to take and hit it with my rubber mallet. And we're going to knock it. And we've got to go counterclockwise. And so we've got it loose. We should be able to get it the rest of the way by hand, maybe. No guarantees. <clears throat> I know my measurements, I know where I want the jam nuts, so that's all the information I need from this one. All right. And you can see just how bad that is. All right, so this is what I want. And we're just going to take that one off the other end as well. All right, so let's get this one off. So look at the difference in these. So anytime you got one like that, you can get a wrench on a lot better without the worries of rounding it off. Now, if yours are corroded and no good, then I guess, uh, you know, you're going to have to use the replacement ones. So we're just going to run this down here to where it was on the other one. Okay, so I just put it back at 9 16 there. It's just a little less than, than 5 eighths. Now, in case you're wondering about the threads here, they're the same. I measured them from the old one, and they are the same. So, no difference. The only difference is, is that this nut is a little bit heavier duty than that one. So I'm going to run this one down until we get it to 11 sixteenths. All right, right about there. Okay, let's just go ahead and get our outer tie rod on. And I said, we, you know, I'm going to measure the overall length, and still it really doesn't tell me a lot. I'm not going to tighten these up or jam them up because I don't know if it's even going to be good enough to even drive it down to the alignment shop. All right, so I've got this where I want it for now, and this is pointed straight up. So if I want to turn it, I'm going to take the, this one's got a hex. I'm going to take the 17, and I'm going to turn this until it's pointed in the direction that I need it one way or the other. So somewhere about in there, so we can move it again if need be. All right, so we're getting close to getting this on here and getting it back in. Now, these come with a little jam nut too, but it's no bigger than the ones that were on the rack here. So 
So I got this where I want it. I'm just going to run it up there until it touches. And oh, it moved on me, so I need to move this a little bit here. All right, so we're all put together here and ready to go. We'll just go ahead and uh, work this back under the vehicle, slip it onto our bolts. Okay, prior to slipping this on here, I'm gonna take some of uh, my high strength Loctite and we're gonna put on both of these. And so we've got all kinds of room that collar for the uh, steering column up there will move out of the way. Okay, the only thing that I'm having issue with is the uh, tie rod out here. Yeah, I just got it kind of setting on that bolt. I'm going to see if I can't slip this in. Or I'm just kind of pushing this up and putting this bolt in my hand or getting it started at least. Just so I know it ain't going to fall. Okay, so I got those threaded from behind a little bit. Let's go ahead and get back behind it and we'll snug them up. Alright, let's get this snugged up. But it did not look like three quarts came out that power steering. Could have been low, I suppose. Usually I keep a check on it. Alright, so no, we're not getting over here on this side with a torque wrench. So we're going to tighten it by the same means that we took it loose. We're going to get it just as tight as we can get it. And this one on this side, we're going to actually try to torque it to the 185. I think it's 185 for these two-wheel drives and 235 for the four-wheel drive. what luck we can have here. Uh, so we're just gonna get this good and tight. I know how much force it took to take it loose, so so when you kind of start hearing well, it helps if I watch what I'm doing. It's not moving a whole lot, so I know that's tight. Now, another thing you can do is get you a couple of big wrenches and really put it to it. And you can assure that it's going to be tight. Okay, I'm getting ready to slip this back on to the rack here. Kind of clean this up a little bit. A lot of dirt so the little notch is going back that way now obviously I'll have to rotate it to where I need it here
Okay, so <clears throat> this was hitting up here because of I had it rotated this way. Now what I did was I pulled out just a little bit on that tie rod to make this rotate back around this way so I could slip it on easier. So uh, that was the only trick to that. Now I'm just getting ready to lock tight this uh, little bolt in here. Okay, so using the high strength Loctite again we'll just get our 13 millimeter over here and start snugging that up alright I'm gonna torque this to 35 foot pounds here now Right, while we're here at this, we'll go ahead and get our line back on. This is our return line. Now make sure, uh, you know, these have been dripping, so the seal has fluid on it. Make sure it's not going in dry. Now I did clean these off really good, sprayed them off. Just want to get it all the way down by hand. Okay, now you don't have to get wild and crazy tight with these. If the seal's good, then it's going to seal. If it just, if you've got it nice and tight and it's still leaking, then it's just the seal's messed up. Now these never leak. If it does, then I'll eat my words. But usually it's not an issue unless you can visibly see the seal is damaged. So that's that's pretty tight right there so that's good we'll just that little bit of a snug it's not going to move all right so now it's time for the pressure line said if I have any issues I'll replace the line because these lines are old and you see how far I got that threaded by hand before I put this on here and it's thread and fines so otherwise I wouldn't be doing this okay, that's getting tight so we'll just give it a little bit more Good enough. Right, let's go ahead and slip our tie rod down in place. Have to bend it and get it to line up. Okay, and these have the, uh, it's not a Teflon locking nut, but it's a locking nut. As you can see, it's where the end is. Uh, of the nut itself is made to lock. This torqued. I'm going to go 45 on this.
All right, I'm gonna put a little medium Loctite on this one as well, just as some added. All right, I got the medium Loctite on there. Okay, so if it tries to spin us, we'll just hold this. When we get on this with a wrench. So we'll keep doing this. Rob, we'll go ahead and torque this side 45. Okay, at this point I'm going to work on getting these wheels back on and then we're going to get some transmission fluid into the reservoir up there. Okay, we'll just go around and kind of snug these up a little bit for now. We'll torque them once we get the vehicle lowered. Okay, and we're just going to get the tire on the other side as well. Okay, so we're going to start getting some fluid in here. And I said it calls for the ATF 4. So use what you feel like. It's a power steering pump and rack and pinion, so I doubt that it's that critical as long as you got some fluid in it. Ooh, overfilling this mess. That filled up way faster than I thought it would. bad thing about stuff like that is when you go to checking for leaks when you spill it all over the place you don't know what's going on so I'm gonna have to try to get as much as that cleaned up um, I think I'm gonna go ahead may have to take a little bit of that back out there it's probably gonna overflow again okay because I don't know what this thing is gonna do initially I'm gonna put this back on because I don't want it to make a, more of a mess than it already did. And uh, <clears throat> it should ventilate out this cap regardless, but we'll uh, want to make sure it's not going to overflow first. So we'll go ahead and get the truck cranked up here, start working some of this air out. Okay, you hear making some noise there. I'm going to go work this uh, wheel a little bit. I'm going to think I'm going to check this cap, let me hope that it ain't gonna come out of here. Okay, I need to add some more. Let me fill it. Okay, so we're gonna pour this slowly. I guess as soon as that pump See if I can get a visual. Okay, you can see that down in there. That's about where I want it for now. I don't want to gush it out up here. So I'm gonna leave this off and see if we can't uh, get it cranked up and work a little air out. All right, you can see it swirling around in there.
Okay, so uh, unfortunately I got the fluid topped off, but this uh, rack is not doing right at all. And I've been working the air out slowly and it's like shaking and and uh, something going on with it. I've never even seen one do this before. So we're going to be having to swap this out. And uh, I'll just have to follow up once we get another one on here because I've, I've never had this issue. So something's going on with this one. Okay, we're back out here today. Uh, see, we got the got that replacement off of there. Now, I actually went and picked this up at Advance, and this is uh, definitely a much better looking um, rack and pinion. This is a Cardone, and it appears to be, you know, the exact OEM. And it actually comes with the little O-rings. However, those weren't leaking the ones that were on there but it comes with those uh, much better packaging even and uh, same price as the one I ordered so this is definitely the route to go um, so we're gonna go ahead uh, we're gonna get uh, bushings back in here and pretty much uh, same process over and it actually came with some bushings too which is nice Okay, I was wanting to share this helpful tip with you here. Now going back, instead of using the wrench I had, I've got this uh, half inch serpentine belt tool and I'll just put it on the 24 and it actually fits in here to where I can get a top wrench on it and you just have to kind of adjust it, but I can get my big cheater bar on here and able to really torque this down good so that might be of help to someone else okay so we got the rack bolted down we got the tie rods bolted down we got the pinch bolt for the steering column the only thing i didn't attend to is these o-rings here so i'm getting ready to replace this this is Duck a little bit. So this like I said this came. So you know the bigger one's gonna go on this. The return. So you want to get you a little bit of clean fluid on that new O-ring. These new ones are a little snug, so you gotta stretch them a little. In just a moment. Okay, so let's try to stretch that on there. We got it on there, but uh, try not to gouge into it with my fingernail. So now we're just gonna get these replaced like we did before. Okay, so I'm just uh, topping this off once again, and we're gonna see if we have any better luck. Okay, we got it pretty well topped off. I'm going to go in here and just see if I can work some air out.
right, so that's usually about, you know, what I do. And then I'm going to, everything's sounding good, um, other than just, I'm going to try to get these wheels a little better lined up. But it seems to be operating fine here. Uh, let's go in and check for leaks. Okay, so if you're going to have any, they're going to be right here. You know these lines maybe if something didn't get done right, but everything's looking good So uh, I think we're gonna Go ahead and get our wheels back on here and uh, We'll go ahead and uh, see if we can't get them lined up a little bit better Okay, so just to show you how I'm lining these um, Wheels up here coming here got the steering wheel straight as we can get it and I'm just using some string and we've got it tied right there somewhere and kind of like hooked it on the tire where it's going to try to keep it about in the center and we're just running that up to the front and the idea I'm going to pull this tight against that back tire and as you can see we're hitting on the back right there and we got a gap so we need to bring this out looks like about a half inch or maybe a little less on this side now over here Let's see. And this is just going to get us, you know, to the alignment shop. But we're like, we're like maybe an eighth of an inch. So I don't even know if I'll adjust this side. It's not a lot. This side's pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and just adjust this out over here and check it again. So we purposely left this loose because I knew that I was going to be adjusting this. So with uh, this is just like the OEMs. You got to get some pliers on here. And we're just going to turn this. We're going to start backing it off. With it up in the air, it's usually not real difficult to get this to move but it's still not real easy I really need some some vice grips here so you get the idea and if your boot starts twisting up just take that clamp off there because it's going to go to twisting on you just take that loose so I'm going to turn this a little more Okay, so I rotated it a few turns there. It wasn't very many. Well, I didn't count it, but I'm touching. I'm just pulling it tight and touching the back of the tire. And I've like maybe got a sixteenth of an inch of that. It's almost touching, so I'm pretty good with that. I'm going to take a look at this other side. I might adjust it. Okay, so I got these where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and put this back okay I want to tighten up this jam nut here now my case is 7 8 fits on the outer tie rod I don't want that to be turning so I'm going to hold that as well and then I've got my 15 16 and we're going to snug this down really good while we're holding this one. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Alright, that's pretty tight. 
Okay, because this is like an OEM rack, it uh, the measurements worked out really good. So uh, this side was a little bit off. This one over here is almost right on. So I'm going to go ahead and get the jack stands out. We'll get this lowered. And we'll take it for a test drive and just see how it's doing. Okay, we got the vehicle loaded again. Or lowered, we're going to go ahead and torque our lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, so here we are taking it down the road. The steering feels really nice and tight, which I, I knew it would. Those outer tie rods were just toast. So it, it actually feels like a new one again. So the uh, rack seems to be doing really well. I put a little bit more fluid in it, just kind of topped it off. The steering wheel seems to be pretty well pretty well centered all things considered and uh, you can see how it's driving the alignment's not that bad so we got it got it pretty close don't want to drive it a lot till we get it lined up but uh, we got it pretty well close it's not any excessive road noise or anything and seems to be doing pretty good and we don't have any leaks so that's a big plus Okay, so uh, you've seen how that first replacement went. You know, it was shaking really bad. I didn't catch it all on camera, but it was shaking so bad. I don't think I've ever seen one shaking that bad. Um, <clears throat> said my old one was working fine. It just had leaks. Uh, as far as working, it was working good, and it wasn't, wasn't like that. And, uh, you know, the tie rods are bad on it. So, uh, said... Got another one from Advance. They had one in stock. You know, went down and got it the same day. And uh, we got it fixed. So uh, there's a lesson to be learned. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's we take things apart several times and we'll be really good at it next time. I don't know. So anyways, uh, that's going to do it for the video. Uh, and by the way, the part at Advance was the same as what I paid for it online. I don't know if I'd mentioned that. And it came with the seals and the bushings and everything. So this one's working good. Uh, the main thing, I wanted to get the leaks fixed under here because the old one was leaking. And I was constantly having to add to the fluid. So that was what I wanted to get took care of and the tie rods. So pleased with it. The steering is really tight now. Feels really good. Doesn't have all that slack. And this is, you know, pretty much the final piece to getting all of the suspension I've got up here uh, done other than I think the stabilizer links which you know they're not just horrible but anyways that's going to do it for the video I hope you uh, found it helpful if you did give it a thumbs up as uh, always I invite you to subscribe and thanks for watching